Ciao James. Come va? Bene. We're happy. So Pietro, tell me about um, your views on 2017. Yes, I think 17 uh, was a kind of a, um, how you say, surprising vintage in the way that uh, was a hot, you know, we can consider 17 part of the warm or even in some, you know, some periods of the vintage hot, but uh, was surprising because, uh, because the, the situation, you know, the place where we are, you know, the, the southern part of Piemonte, you know, we are not too far away from the sea, from the Ligurian Sea. So we got this, what I think, this humidity from the sea. So it was hot, but not dry. So the, 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 the main uh, difference be, uh, in this vintage was hot and humid. So when you have this humidity, that's something that, you know, talking to other people, we try to understand, you know, probably this humidity outside in the environment kept humidity inside uh, uh, the soil. You know, James, our soil is made mostly clay, which keeps humidity, mm -hmm. but of course, if it's dry, 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 dehydrate. But in this case, kept humidity. So the roots maintain a kind of humidity, a healthy uh, condition. So overall, uh, was warm, was anticipated, of course, is it, is it, but, but fresh. That's something that you find in the wines. So at the end, you don't find uh, flat, uh, override freshness. So it's an incredible uh, situation of a, of a freshness in a warm vintage. Okay. Then on top of that also, I would say also the, the, the management of the canopy and the grass by, by like I can say my winery, but also my, my, my friends, you know, the colleagues, everyone is keeping more grass on the ground. So we keep also dehydration. And also I kept also very, in the last years, I'm, I'm doing this uh, bigger canopy, thicker, more leaves. So to keep also more uh, freshness again in the, in the vines, for the vines. And also I heard, was it true that you had some rain in August that helped? Yes, we have these 25 millimeters, which is very tiny, but enough to do this kind of a last uh, refresh, refreshness of the grapes between the end of August, beginning of September, that really made a relief on, on, the, on the vine. So especially for, at that point for the grapes, so they, they kept the, the grapes fresh and again, good for, for harvest. Of course, we picked the grapes uh, by the end of September. Everything was done. Okay. <laughs> so very early. <laughs> very early. But the season, at the end, the number of days, uh, normally uh, late vintage is 200 days in mm -hmm. all season. Uh, and, and this season they calculated was 185. A, a short season is 170. So 17 was 185, was not. So the season for Nebbiolo at the end was uh, long enough to ripe, especially, you know, for us, as you know, the tanning, the problem yeah. of us is ripe the tanning. If the season is too short, the tanning can be aggressive. But in this, in this uh, vintage, uh -huh. the end, the tannin are not dry, are not aggressive, are not tight. Although um, some, not in your wines, but some wines have quite chewy tannins. But I, I'm surprised in general, like you said, how fresh the wines are. Like you really thought it would be heavier, like 11 or worst case scenario, 2003, but it's nothing like that. Exactly, exactly. Even the, yeah, because the, if you see the parameters, like, you know, the analysis, you know, acidity is good, was good. pH, but also was not too high. But also what, uh, like in my winery, what I've done in the last years is also to, uh, I do more su uh, submerged cap. 
Mm -hmm. You know, so I try to keep a little bit uh, longer skin contact. And also I try not to rock the wine too much because of this uh, global warming. We can say that. Yeah. I mean, it's quite evident. So we try to compensate the, 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 <laughs> the, the climate change uh, with a much softer vinification in order to keep, again, freshness by uh, giving less air, less oxygen to the wine. So remember, 20 days, I remember myself too, you know, 20 days ago, we used to rock a lot, oxygen, oxygen. Now, yeah. <laughs> totally, totally the opposite, you know, I much know less that. air, keeping the wines more, almost reductive. Reduced. Yeah. Exactly, exactly, that way, no? So it's really a, a big uh, shift in, in uh, winemaking, especially for us that we, we need a long, a long, a long aging in, in a long process in the cellar. In the viola needs time. There is that. Okay. We need. Time. <laughs> and so when you when you face time, so means you know twenty four months in barrels is a long aging. It's not like uh, otherwise they only need uh, twelve months, nine months. That's true. Twenty four, it's long. So you need really to protect them in that way. So how what what sort of what year does 2017 remind you of then? Well, probably like uh, we I like to co compare you know these ten years earlier you know like 17, 7, 16, yeah. 6, <laughs> yeah. 18, 8, a little bit. Uh, how uh, interesting! Playing like that ten years, uh, of course very different as, as we were saying before because of this change also of management change of uh but but uh, probably the most similar I would say maybe seven in their way early uh, yes. very different from 11 trying to but different from 11 but yes. it, it, different from seven as well because of course much more seven, elegant. Seven. Yeah, seven was much earlier. It was har they harvested some things almost in like uh, the middle of September, I think, it, or yeah. the first week. I remember, but they're beautiful wines. But these have much more freshness. They're much more quadrato, like they're framed. Exactly. Yes, and also more elegant. Yeah. Uh, what I find in like these aromas, more flowering, which is not easy to uh to have uh, these kind of uh, uh flowers aromas in a in a in a warm vintage you know normally you get more in the cool vintage so that's something that i i i like in the in the in the 17 which we don't we, we didn't have in the 07 for sure for sure no to they were they were much more fruit just pure fruit right yes Yes, it was much more ripe. It was yeah. also a time that we loved that too. I mean, and we can't, uh, uh, no, we loved that. We wanted to get also that extraction uh, in the wines. Why now we want, uh, like I, I talk about myself, I want more finesse, more elegancy. That's what I'm looking for. Uh, less power, but, you know, in a good, uh, in a good ele ele elegant, elegant style. Which is also La Morra, also my place, also mm. my my village. And it's amazing the um, the Marcanasco really has it's so attractive already with such fine tannins. Yes, and very transparent, clear. I think that's from the reductive winemaking, where it's much just beautiful fruit. Yes, exactly. And it's, it, yeah, probably for that method is helping in this way because we keep this uh, more, more um, yeah, more, more flowering again, more, uh, and also when, when you keep the wine like that, a little more relative, then when you open the bottle, it's like boom, pop in your, like this, no? Uh, which is very nice also in this vintage. It's not a, sh it's definitely not a shy vintage. <laughs> no. It's not shy. <laughs> it's very uh, 
appealing, very um, open in that way. Uh, which wine would you taste after the um, Marcanasco? Would you have the Conca or the uh, Roque? I normally taste the, the, the Conca, uh, even if the Roque, even if the, the Conca is more powerful than Roque. Yes. But that's the way I like because I like the, it's a different personality of the wine. Conca is really powerful. Yeah. Here you, you here you, the Conca, you know, remember, in Conca, the name of, of, of the vineyard is a, is a conch, Conca, like a bowl. So here you, you always have a, a kind of, also the soil is richer, stronger. We are at the bottom of the hill. It's one piece of, of this blue clay. Limestone and clay I means really a, 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 a big boy uh, in terms of what always more more, more liquids, more more that's definitely not typical La Morra flowering uh, Barolo. Okay, it's always a conca goes on his own in my in my free Barolo. Tell me about the the Roque di uh, de l'Annunziata, because I found a lot, I, I tasted a lot of different ones, not a lot, but maybe five or six, and they were all seemed rather light for the vintage, very mm -hmm. refined, and they weren't, they weren't super structured, they were more delicate. How did that happen? Be, Roque di l'Annunziata is a place uh, already for that. No, it's a vineyard that doesn't have a lot of power itself doesn't have a lot of color this the yeah we know why well, conca is, uh, is dark uh, yeah. rock is light. so <laughs> we know <laughs> that's something we can't uh, uh, deal with that uh by rocca dell'annunziata uh also the exposure uh but it's also warm but it's a little bit more uh southwest uh, also, and uh, and I think this really the soil uh, is this mix of clay with a little bit of sand that gives this extra finesse. We also anticipated the vintage here also because uh, you know we we pick the grapes uh, mid mid September eh, in Rocca dell'Annunziata. So so Rocca dell'Annunziata is always the wow. one of the earliest. Oh yeah, yeah, September fifteen. So to keep this uh, freshness also elegancy. And how would you compare um, Mar uh, Marcinasco? Marcinasco is different because Marcinasco is an area. Okay, it's more, it's not really a single vineyard. Yeah, that's true. More an area. And also, I tell you the truth, in 17, I also added some grapes from recent acquisition of vineyards in the, in the top part of La Morra. We talk uh, about 450, 500 meters altitude. Uh, so they, we were, uh, so I added these grapes a little bit later ripening to give a little bit more, um, personality also to, to the Marchenasco. So, so in, in that way, we, we have a mix of grapes from lower part of La Mora where, I, where most of my vineyards are in a higher part of La Mora. So we, we balance a little bit the, 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 the blend of the two uh, areas. So Marcellus is more like, let's say more exact, again, an area rather than the two single vineyards of Conca and Rocca de l'Annunziata. But I, I really thought that uh, Marcellusco was one of the best I've had for a long time. Really? So maybe, yeah, maybe it was because you added something wow. from this, but very complex and structured, you know? Yeah. Thank you. Honestly, I thought it was the same for different reasons. But the Roque um, de la uh, Annunziata was beautiful, refined. But the Marchinasco was really impressive. Thank like, you. Wow. Oh, thank you. So, I, uh, I, I think the good tanning, job. Thank you very much. Thank you. I think that the, the tanning again, as you said, I think this submerged cap made the tannins more 
dense, you know, a little bit uh, more compact. Yeah. Not too, again, not too dry. The vinification, so again, vineyards and vinification together, they made uh, the, the wine very, very, very nice. So thank you. <laughs> no, well done. Okay, listen, I better run off. So okay. nice to talk to you, Pietro, and um, the wines were beautiful. And, and thank you for your uh, comments. Grazie ancora. Thank you, James. See you okay. soon. A presto, grazie. Ciao, ciao.